It's 7.07. I'm Daedalus Howell. We're with Terry Garrett. He's the co-managing member of Sustaining Technologies and Go Local Group. You know these guys because every store you walk into practically in Sonoma County has a Go Local this, a Go Local that, local that, local this. Mm -hmm. The ubiquity of the Go Local concept is phenomenal in this county. How have you manipulated and tricked people into <laughs> obeying your decree that they must have your, uh, no, but seriously, yeah. you've really accomplished something remarkable in terms of getting your arms around what local commerce means and getting sure. everyone on board uh, participating. Let's talk about what Go Local is. Well, we had to shorten it years ago so that we could remember ourselves. Yeah. It's economic development marketing. Okay. And what the, the compactness of that is that uh, for the purpose of economic development, uh, we want the market share of all goods and services to tilt more towards locally owned businesses. That's where we get the greatest multiplier. Right. It used to be that way. This was, this was not a new invention. Uh, it was that it, way organically and then big box stores switched. and sure. franchises. And, yeah, yeah. The 50s, 50s and 60s started the movement uh, towards the globalization of retail space. Right. right? We had malls, we had chain stores. I uh, had the birth of all of that in the 50s and 60s, and it seemed like the way to go. You know, I'm, I'm sure as a developer, it was great. You know, you want to put up a new mall, uh, and you know which chain stores are going to populate that mall, and right. you got your lease uh, stuff set up, and, and it was and pretty easy. And stuff. Sure, and it, it, it was out in the suburbs, because that's if you were going to do new development, that's where you were going to do it. That's where the land was. That's yeah. right. Uh, in the market. Yeah. And, but then what happened, though, is a lot of uh, local economies were displaced. That's right. Because that money began to go back sure. to wherever they were from. That's yeah. right. And so everybody started learning the uh, phrase again, economic multiplier. Right. <laughs> so a dollar <laughs> spent a, at a local, locally owned store is, we retain more of that dollar here in a multiply. Right. It grows here faster than it would, or, uh, or at all, versus yeah. somewhere else. Think of it as more uh, cycles of exchange. So if a local store owner gets $100, okay. uh, and they hire other local people, like a local attorney, a local accountant, uh, you know, the, all of their ancillary services, their employees, uh, uh, their own personal profit that they might make off of the business goes mm -hmm. into a local bank, right. all of these things that uh, make that next wave of exchange, that impact, that direct impact uh, is local. Right. Uh, if you're uh, a chain store, I mean, you sweep it in, but at, the, at, the, at midnight, the home office <laughs> is sweeping those bank accounts, right. and anything that is beyond your petty cash is, is going to New York or Chicago or yeah. wherever your headquarters are. And so, uh, now some of it comes back in the form of wages, but it's a much smaller amount. And so, our argument wasn't that difficult to make, because most people just rationally understand that's how you operate a business. Right. And if you keep more of it here, then it brings advantages the more that's, so that's a direct impact and they're indirect and induced. So there's like three uh, concentric circles, so to speak, of ripples that go out from that. And at the end of the day, more of the money stays here. And it's been so embraced. I mean, I, I, go, I go to Exchange Bank where we hold our accounts and it uh -huh. says, bank local. Yeah. You have been able to take the word local and make it meaningful and really part of your brand so that you can put any sort of noun in front of it, or verb in front of it, verb, and, it yeah. <laughs> and it continues <laughs> to have meaning uh, and associated yeah. with, with your entity. You yeah. guys are a nonprofit, right? We're a California cooperative. Okay. And it's, Which is a form secretary, of, yeah, secretary yeah. of State regards it as a um, nonprofit. And in by cooperative, that means you have um, members, That's right. right, who are local business sure. people. And, right. And Organizations, they, yeah. city government, county government. Um, uh, any type of organization, but then they're members of the co-op. Let, let me ask you, in this in this market, do you have a competitor? Is there another entity that does what you do that uh, with whom you have any kind of um, competitive aspect? Uh, not on the uh, front of economic development marketing and specifically with that right. cause and that technique. So we're very much... Um, alone on that. Yeah. Is that. That's our mission. But it's also to persuade others to do that. So we want the uh, Sonoma County Economic Development uh, Initiative to also put first the local organizations and right. the city governments to put first 
those. So other people adopt those practices, and that's what we, that's our aim. So instead of uh, a city or county incentivizing uh, a big box store with tax incentives that's and right. that kind of thing, you're, you're saying, hey, how about we do keep it local and work, lo work sure. with local entities? Those are all resources, right? I mean, right. if you take, give a tax abatement or uh, any kind of reduction in cost of services, uh, that's a contribution. It is. And yeah, so, it's not just right. fake it's not pretend just, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a real thing. And so if we have those resources, let's give them to the local businesses mm -hmm. uh, to give them a leg up to grow and so start new businesses. What qualifies as local now? I mean, local ownership. Okay. It's got to be 51 in our, in our definition. Yeah. Uh, it has to be 51% uh, local ownership. So we have some odd things that have come on the horizon lately where you have like a Lagunitas, right? Yeah. Which is this locally identified. Only 50%. Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. Heineken owns a big chunk of them. That's now. what I mean. They yeah. bought fifty percent, so they didn't yeah. quite go over the line. They're still local for us. <laughs> <laughs> what about Amy's Kitchen? I, I, I'm pretty sure they're completely family owned. Yeah. Yet they're represented in many countries now, or at least at least England. Well, they well. sell, but they're headquartered here. Okay. So it's uh, just imagine that uh, the magnetic pole of attracting all that money. Where is that? Right. That's here. If it's in San, uh, Sonoma County and all the, their money when they sweep those accounts and other places comes back here and then and then goes out from there. That's what we look for. So what happens if Google or Pixar wants to move to Sonoma County and uh -huh. Ben Stone has been working on this for years to get, uh -huh. you know, get them to be based here. Do you guys mount a protest? I mean, it, how how do you no. I, I mean, how how do you reconcile like the need for attracting that kind of entity so far as the county sees it versus sure. keeping those dollars those, those incentives uh, local? Well, you're talking about if uh, hypothetically, hypothetically Pixar said we're going to move our headquarters and we will be based. We're going to start uh, a new entity, uh, oh. Pixar 2. Yeah, um, well, I don't, th that's not, I mean, we don't have any companies doing what Pixar is doing. Right. Here right. it doesn't say that we wouldn't at some point, but we don't now. Yeah. And uh, so that wouldn't really be a threat. It would actually be something pretty cool. But, you know, really uh, when you measure jobs, income, all those sorts of things, historically, only three to five percent of all of the new jobs, all of the new income comes from attraction. Wow. The rest of it comes from what's already here. And it, it, it is kind of amazing to me that economic development, particularly with chambers of commerce and yeah. all of these, were pursuing the attraction principle that 90% of their budget was going towards the thing that only produced three to 5% of the results. Why is that? Uh, Why I don't know. I mean, you'd have to get those guys in here. Yeah, it's, it's a puzzle to me because uh, I, I've, I'm aware of the same figures to a degree. And it just seems that it would be so displacing to have these like, like just target through Brooks through your window. I mean, does, it, does, <laughs> does that happen? I mean, and I'm not trying to like, like no. create a, you know, like a. But, uh, you know, but what I, I think uh, this past uh, year and a half, uh, so we worked the food category pretty, pretty steady. Yeah. You know, we've been working it for a number of years, uh, particularly with uh, the local retailers and Oliver's, I think most people are aware of. Yeah. Because they were sort of the beta. Uh, for this of does branding local work right does, is it effective if you if you put that go local brand on something and if you put it in front of all the products so we are yeah. in front of close to 5700 products now oh, wow. in a local store so um, well let's go back come back, okay. back to that in a second here. it's okay. 707 we've got Terry Garrett here from go local we'll, we'll be right back And we're back on 707 with Terry Garrett. He is the co-managing member of Sustaining Technologies, or member of Sustaining Technologies and Go Local Co-op. Boy. It's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> member Sustaining Technologies, that's a separate entity. Yes. What is this? It's a, Sustaining Technologies is the LLC that is the manager of Go Local. So Got it. Go Local is the cooperative and we're the management company. So we manage the business of Go local. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, where did you come from? This is not, that is not a Sonoma County accent. No. Yeah. Well, maybe back in the day it was, <laughs> right? right? When, when, all they, the, uh, when they started it, yeah. That's right. Uh, I'm from originally from Alabama. Okay. I spent most of my adult life in Arizona, so that's why it's tempered a little bit. Right. Uh, what brought you out here? You know, I always wanted to live in Northern California after uh, traveling out here in. Um, it's probably the late 80s, early 90s. 
um, I was a media consultant for alternative news weeklies. And so right. the, the San Francisco Bay Guardian was one of my clients for a number of years. Oh, wow. And also Coast Weekly in Carmel and Monterey. So you can imagine yeah. traveling <laughs> from Arizona and lighting down into the Bay Area and then spending a few days down in Carmel each uh, couple times a month. Uh, and you thought like, the whole thing was, Cal all, Cal all of California was like that. Well, so. no, I, I, I was very familiar with Southern California. Right. I knew I did not want to live there. Yeah. Uh, but getting exposed uh, to NorCal over a number of years and actually looked for houses in uh, Carmel because I thought, well, you know, I'll just move out here. And at the time, uh, <laughs> a ranch-style home on the hills right above Carmel was uh, 250000 I went, oh, I can get three times the house for that in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm a media consultant, <laughs> right. not a real estate speculator. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you've, so your career has been steeped in media, one way or the yeah. other, in the management of not just content, but, uh, but the advertising mechanisms associated with, with media. Yeah. And, All the... It started out, you know, in sales. I, mm -hmm. I started out on the sales and marketing side. Uh, but over the years, and I, I had a, a mentor um, that told me, and he was, had been very successful in, in all aspects of media, and he said, you need to learn each part of the business if you want to get really good at this. And that was Rupert uh, Murdoch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close. <laughs> He told us to focus on classifieds. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and then he met Craig Newmark. And That's yeah. right. It was all over. Uh, now, and so I, I really started. I took that to heart. And yeah. I um, actually, the, the fellow that uh, had said that to me had a, a venture capital firm in uh, Phoenix. And it was a media fund. And oh, wow. so they hired me. And I went and, and I did due diligence uh, on projects that we were looking at and would parachute into a market and do the media analysis of the market, that sort of thing. So it, it started teaching me about other aspects of the oh, business. That's, that's and fascinating. So, yeah. so you could like come into Sonoma County, see who all the players were and make an assessment of like what's not being spoken to, what's not being... Yeah, that, uh, essentially that was it, is find the gap. Right. find and and even to this day it's sort of like a, a habit you know as yeah. I can I can pick up a publication and within a few minutes within you know four or five percent tell you what they're doing uh, on an annualized basis and it's just you know some of those things that you ended up or that I ended up having to learn to do why very on quickly. earth would you come to our show because <laughs> you know what this is <laughs> that's happening. well there's actually huge gaps here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in this market, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about that. That's fascinating yeah. to me. That what are the gaps in the Sonoma County market? And then we'll talk about how Go Local has come in to fill some of them. Yeah, so I think that um, this is, you know, being somewhat geographically remote from the heart of the DMA here, which is, you know, San Francisco. Right. What does DMA the, mean? Uh, the uh, okay. dominant market. Or metropolitan. Uh, or? No, it's d dominant market. Uh, area. Something or other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Designated well. market area. Um, okay. Uh, and, and so the um, San Francisco has always been sort of the epicenter of that. And the further you get out from that, as the population starts to thin, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have less and less crossover influence, but particularly going south. And okay. so this has always been kind of a sleepy market. It's never had a. It's never been a TV market. You know, you just get. Mostly, even today, it's probably dominated by cable, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so that left uh, just a daily newspaper presence as primary, and then you have a number of smaller newspapers and magazines, and you have radio, of course. Right. That's but big here, but well it's yeah, but it's still disproportionately had been print, and when print has no challenger, when and usually in, since the fifties. Uh, in the 60s, papers, yeah. Yeah, it's either a couple of papers or always a uh, presence of local television. Right. Uh, but local television here is not clearly represented by a San Francisco-based station. Right. I, I don't consider that local for, for a population as big as Sonoma yeah. County. And so the fact that there has not been that sort of competition, it, it creates a, a sort of a complacency in the marketplace. It's mm. like by default, there's this monopoly uh, and oh, nobody enough. really, yeah. nobody really challenges it, you yeah. know. And so, yeah, and because uh, it's a monopoly, uh, you don't want to mess with it because they can just ignore you. That's true, because yeah. it's a small town, yeah, right. And so you get this dynamic of sort of a de facto uh, market leader, 
If you're um, not in the press Democrat, do you exist? Right. I mean, that, that's... And it was not, uh, you know, this was the uh, same throughout the country. In almost every market I wor uh, worked in, there was always a presumption of rights by a daily newspaper mm -hmm. that if it moves, reads, and advertises, we have a right to it first <laughs> before everybody else. And that's just from years of being the dominant wow. player. And uh, so it, in a place where there clearly are no challengers uh, to that, then it's fairly natural for them to take that um, view. And uh, this is not to be disparaging uh, towards, I'm just saying it's kind of more just what I observed when no, I first came up yeah. here, is that, oh, okay, it's sort of a sleepy media market, uh, even though the um, Project Censored, based out of here, which all of us in the in the alternative uh, press ran uh, for years, every right. year. It was a big, a big deal, State. Project yeah. Censored. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but it's, um, anyway, it's yeah. not a lot of investigative reporting, let's put it that way. Fair enough. And and yet, you have found a niche, though. That That's what's interesting about Made Local Magazine, for example, is mm -hmm. that you, you identified, like, there's a, a foodie culture that's emerged here. I know that you predicated some of your editorial on what was the, the report that came the out? The Food Action Plan for Sonoma plan. County, right. which the uh, supervisors, county supervisors approved in uh, November 2012. But the challenge was, how do you tell those stories consistently and across a continuum uh, that touch all the different pillars that were represented? It was, it was a fabulous report. I, was, yeah. I came in in a later stage of the drafting of of that to join the Food System Alliance. Uh, yeah. But it was a com it's a comprehensive document and it's meant to be this changing document. It's, it's a set of goals. It's to say, here's a vision for a great food system, for the best food system on the planet. Uh, yeah. Here's a vision for it in Sonoma County and we can achieve it. But it needed a communications piece uh, mm -hmm. some, the, that could consistently do that. And so yeah. it just dawned on me that, well, we could do that uh, with the with a magazine. Let's come and back to that in a second okay. here. Okay. 707, we've got Terry Garrett. We'll be right back. It's 707. We're back with Terry Garrett. He's the co managing member of Sustaining Technologies. Am I saying that right? Member of Sustaining Technologies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Go Local Co op. You know these guys because they have Go Local do everything local, uh, circular banners uh, in every place worth a damn in Sonoma County. So speaking of being worth a damn, what is the life cycle of uh, a company, uh, a business locally owned that wants to become involved with Go Local? What, what does that process look like? What's the onboarding for that? It's fairly simple. They can just, they join Go Local and they can join online or they can call us and we'll walk them through mm -hmm. uh, the process. But it, um, it's, it's a relationship that's beyond putting signage in the window. It's, it is. I yeah. mean, it, and it's taken a while for us to be able to express that into the expectations of someone who joins. Right. Uh, local businesses, independent businesses are at all levels of aptitude about marketing and right. uh, media and, and all of that. So uh, some of them need a lot more hand-holding and explanation and a lot, uh, quite frequently more tools. And so we've developed a full tool chest of this, but we tell them, you know, this is not a passive thing. You don't just join right. and put a decal in your window. You could do that, but that's not going to be as effective yeah. if you actually market yourself. And I think the distinction would be um, so you provide, Oliver's. Oh yeah, so there's sort of a marketing Oliver's kit you, you provide that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of so, so using Oliver's as an example, what was one of the first things? Well, what Oliver's did and the lesson that I think was learned by many of the other members is that they embraced it as a conjunctive branding uh, symbol. Okay. Uh, so they have, the Oliver's has their own brand. Yes. I mean, they are what they are, but they made a part of that brand their localness and the, right. ben and the uh, economic benefits that go along with that. So all of their external media that they used to tell that story was always and still is with made local go local affiliation because that helped power that symbol throughout the marketplace and then when they do it 
and 400 others do it, right. then all of a sudden it starts to mean something. But then they brought it also into their store. And they, through all of their buying uh, practices, through their merchandising practices, and through their in-store marketing, they made it very clear that's the experience that you got when you walked in there. It almost sounds and like, a, like, a, like a marketing philosophy of a sort. It right. It's certainly an economic philosophy, but you're saying that well, they've tagged items that are locally made. Yes. So there's a, a, an increased awareness in the shopping experience that you're buying local, it's a local product, and you're this, this multiplier effect we sure. talked about earlier. And you have to, you know, we've never tried to be complicated about it, you know, because if you try to go into, uh, you know, explaining economic multipliers and all of that, right. everybody, their eyes roll back in their head. So you just have to break it down. It's more beneficial. And even if it was 10% more, and it's actually not, I mean, it can be double right. the impact, particularly around food that's produced here, sold through a local retailer. And each category has its own set of multipliers. But the point is, if it's 10% or 20% better for the community and for the local economy, well, why wouldn't you? Right. 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 I mean, you, it's, there's no argument after that point. And so most people are very cool with that and just say, oh, wow, okay. If all other things being equal, I'll choose this one. So what about the businesses that elect not to become part of Go Local for reasons that are completely unfathomable? <laughs> right. But, well, but, but the majority don't join. But why? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's just, it's like anything. Uh, some people just aren't joiners. I've talked to people who are, run their businesses. They source locally. They uh, are sustainable. They do all of these things that we want them to do. But they're just not joiners. I mean, you know, right. it, it takes a, a certain kind of uh, person who just likes to join and participate with others. Some people aren't. They're more lone wolves and... So I, I would assume there are synergies, though, that uh, occur when you're part of, you're identified as being part of the program, right? Because yeah. uh, we look for the symbol, we go to the places that have the symbol, you know, that right. have the logo. Sure. Have you thought of just like slapping one on the window on the way out someday? Just, like, <laughs> you <know. laughs> well, you know, we've, we've toyed with a number of ways to make it easier to not have any barriers to participation. And we do, part of what we do is on our website, we list all businesses, whether right. they're owners or not. So we have probably 2,000 businesses in our directory. Regardless of their... Regardless. Yeah. And we point out, we distinguish them by which ones are members and which ones aren't, but right. nevertheless, we promote them. Uh, well, what, so. what about an, an entity like a young farmer who doesn't have like a, a farm stand or a place that, you know, uh, or somebody with a virtual business, like an online business, mm -hmm. how do they identify themselves as Go Local? Uh, well, it depends. You know, not every business is it uh, necessarily a point if you're not competing against right. uh, outside interest or non-local interest then you don't have as much motivation uh, to do that right. most of the farmers can go through CAF so Community okay. Alliance for Family Farms is uh, a Go Local member and then they can extend that I to uh, they're small farm members, which they do, that they can use our branding and that sort of thing. And so they kind of organize that group. So we try to make it possible for uh, smaller uh, members, if they're already part of another organization, to be able to participate. And um, are you taking this concept outside of our area? It seems that this should happen all over America. Well, it is in different forms. Right. Uh, Amoeba, which is the... Um, American for something, right? <laughs> Independent <laughs> Business Association <laughs> Alliance yeah. uh, is one of the national organizations. Bali, uh, B-A-L-L-E, Business Alliance of Local Living Economies is another. Uh, Amoeba does most of the work with networks like ours. We're, we're a member of Amoeba. I see. And so okay. they provide uh, sort of best practices uh, for other organizations, and they run it differently. We're, we're unique to this area. I think we're the only n one that is a not for profit. I mean, we're cooperative, but we have a for-profit organization that runs it. Right. And that's probably the only one I'm aware of in the country that operates that way. The rest are 501 C3s. C6. Or C6, C6, C6 yeah. I think. Yeah. There's this new uh, designation called the B Corp. Yeah. I'm kind of interested mm -hmm. in. Yeah. 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 All kinds of stuff happening there. So what's next for you? I know you're always cooking up new product and ideas and agendas and notions. And well, I think we've, we're taking the our food system work uh, to the next level mm -hmm. with all of our in-store uh, marketing uh, programs. I, I think what's most interesting for me right now is what's happening in the cannabis sector. Mm -hmm. I'm a board member with EDB and also serve on the Cannabis Task Force. We're just now doing our exploration. I've been doing it as well uh, on behalf of Go Local. What are you going to call uh, it? Grown Local? Smoke Local? 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, we do have a grow local for the cultivators. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about the rest, but we're <laughs> we're going to. I mean, this is huge. This yeah. is uh, my first pass at it. Says that there are more people employed in the cannabis sector in Sonoma County than there is in the entire food processing and manufacturing, which includes winemaking. Wow. Well, uh, and when we say employed, we're we're not on the books yet with that employment. No, no, no. But, yeah, uh, but soon uh, receiving yeah. an income. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, that'll, that'll so that's I think that's facing this area. That's with uh, Alma, the adult use uh, marijuana initiative that's mm -hmm. on the ballot, and with uh, just the impact of having to uh, process uh, MRSA, which is the medical marijuana uh, regulation. I mean, yeah. every city, every county is having to deal with this. I mean, you know, and it's, be huge. it's yeah. not like starting a new business. This is 10% of our gross county product that's just been underground for decades yeah yeah I hear you and now we're gonna be dealing with it so fascinating man fast Terry Garrett here a co-managing member of sustaining technologies and go local co-op thanks for being on the show man it's, thank it's you. good stuff I yeah. really appreciate it talking again yeah, yeah. yeah.